Welcome to NLC Solidarity TV. Uh, today we are having our guest on this platform of the voice of our affiliates. Uh, come with me as we meet the comrade president of OPTA, who doubles as the vice president of Nigeria Labour Congress, comrade Benjamin Anthony. Welcome on the show, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's been a nice time uh, following your track, uh, doing a great work in uh, Opta. Uh, Comrade President, on a formal note, can we get to meet you? Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm Comrade Benjamin Anthony, as you earlier said, uh, the president of Opta. Um, as well as the Vice President of the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Chairman of uh, Joint Public Service Negotiating Council. Uh, I'm on, uh, in my second tenure in uh, what uh, in, in, in OPTA and NRC. Comrade President, uh, given the brief of yourself, you are a man with uh, several feathers. You know, you have uh, been with the NLC on track since the Waba regime and right now it's another dispensation of uh, 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 Comrade Ajero. How would you term the development of uh, the movement to be in general? Well, um, the movement as far as I'm concerned were on the right track and uh, you know every day you learn new things. And I think we are moving, our, the objective of the movement, we are still on track and I believe that uh, we'll continue to uh, move in such a pace to ensure that we meet the aspiration of our members, that is the Nigeria working people. Uh -huh. And so we, the development, uh, there are still rooms for improvement. Improvement. In other ways. Mm. So, uh, uh, Comrade President, looking into OPTA, what will you define as uh, your most challenging moment in this organization, in piloting the affairs of this organization? Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, uh, you're, you're faced with a lot of challenges of purging. Uh, you know, some unions seem to say uh, opta is for the junior cadre, uh, while they, they, they have a senior cadre that should be, you know, affiliated to. But you know, we've seen over time that uh, your administration has bring to bear that opta is not only registered of junior staff, you know. So I don't, I want you to share more light. Is act actually opta a junior staff uh, relegated union or? Uh, it's just a hula baloo by your detractors. Well, um, uh, going through the history of uh, our union, uh -huh. uh, many people may not understand it. Um, this union is a coming together of three unions. Uh -huh. uh, as it is, when you look even now into the unions in the Nigeria Labour Congress, there are unions that are just there. Uh, they, they, they are lacking in strength. Uh. Uh, they are lacking in number. And uh, you see, the larger you are, the stronger you are. Yeah. So in 1996, uh, there was a room for merger. So these three unions uh, come together, came together. That is the Nigeria uh, National Union of Public Corporations, uh -huh. the, the civil service technical and the recreational services. They form, come together to form OPTA. And uh, well, as far as we are concerned, uh, from that form formation, all those unions were not junior workers union. Uh -huh. They were unions for everybody. And um, uh, now, since that formation, we we cannot exactly say it, what happened and uh, this issue of Junio came into the law for us and uh, NCSU. Oh. Uh, so these are the only two unions that they, they discriminated 
against uh -huh. when they were doing the law. And uh, we've been resisting that since then. And uh, the, the resistance or the, the, the push came into effect actually when we came in uh, six years ago. Oh. And uh, it was a serious matter. We have been caught severally. And uh, we have had several judgments. Uh, you know how it is. And um, still, uh. as I'm talking to you, we are still in court to clear that issue because we see it as discriminatory and uh, looking at Section 40 of our Constitution. Uh, it says you have the right to join any union of, of your choice. choice. Yes. And uh, we have seen it as, look, uh, why should the constitution mm. says this and another law is saying a different thing uh, so that is what we are in court okay so sorry to interject to your uh, uh, comrade president uh ncsu opta you fall within the nlc purview uh, have you looked at internal uh, mechanism of uh, conflict resolution in this interest well um mostly uh the unions that were even having issues with them uh -huh. but the uh, opta and ncsu yeah. are union from the order center oh, okay uh, they are, you know we'll just be there they will just come and say that uh, uh, the their union is to unionize from level seven and above mm. so between ourselves and the nrc we have not had any issue we work together oh, uh, and um you know, we are as real unionists. Uh. Um, we we know how we know what we are representing. Yes, uh, we are not representing the workers' pocket. Okay, just a direct question, Comrade com President. On the lastly, on this union issue, uh, Opta as a union, do they have uh, senior cadres? Well, even me, I'm not a junior staff. I mean, my directory uh, cadre now. Oh, lovely. Uh, so, uh, okay. and since I came into service, I've been an OPTA member. Oh. And uh, if you go to so many organizations, including their DGs mm. and MDs, they are members of OPTA. Oh. So, and people are still insisting that, as far as they are concerned, mm. it's their own choice. Yeah. Yes, to belong to this. So, union. Uh, yes. And so, we are one. And very soon, I, I believe that. Well, to be rectified. Oh, yes. that's beautiful. Let me take you back, uh, Comrade President. I saw uh, on papers some times ago uh, you, uh, your union was on serious protest in Lagos. What about? Well, uh, you know, um, we cover public uh, utilities. Mm. And uh, we've been in battle with the Lagos state government for more than 10 years. Yeah on issue of water privatization okay and not only lagos state uh it's all over the country uh -huh. as far as we're concerned we believe world bank and imf are using lagos as a test ground okay. to want to privatize our uh, water uh, commissions or both uh -huh. uh, corporations yeah so we've been in battle so the recently uh, last month, they just uh, came up with an issue and downsized about 300 workers. 300? Yes, out of about 600 and something. Mm -hmm. And uh, the unfortunate situation is that we were up ties there who have the highest number of workers and uh, one uh, association called SASGOC. Okay. And... Uh, the SASGOC, at least, uh, let me come out and say, they supported the management to oh. downsize the workers. Wow. But uh, OPTA was stood against it. So they did the downsizing, and uh, we came out, and the public supported us. Yeah. And the Lagos State House of Assembly, too, came into the issue. Uh. So, and I believe that um, it is not the worker that destroy the work, the water corporation yeah it is the management it is the government themselves because 
what they usually do mm. is that check out all the water corporations or water board mm. all over the country. Uh, what they do is that if they want to sell out the place, mm. they will bring people that don't know anything about the corporation or the, it is not their field mm. and tell them what to do to destroy the to destroy the uh, organization mm. so that they cannot blame it on the workers and uh, these are uh, all these things are plans or programs sent to us by IMF, IMF. and the uh, World Bank and do, do, let me tell you that uh, uh, governments mm. or governors use that mm. to get loans. This wash program loan and all this uh, rural waiting, waiting water, this is just to use that in, so, so to come, obtain loan. So we, we did the protest. Let me take you there. Yeah. And I, actually, they listen and the discussions are ongoing now. Okay. On what to do. And I believe some of them. We still come back to the service. Okay, so so uh, as of now, the workers are still uh, engaged, or the the they are those uh, temporarily those, disengaged. Those disengaged are still outside. Oh, okay. But uh, glory be to God, the government is cooperating. Okay, so there's finally a light at the end of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's 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 beautiful. Uh well, let me let me also dive in the IMF issue. Do you think? The challenge, because several sectors we see them being privatized, and uh, at the end of the day, we discover that uh, the privatization is not working in its recent. Do you think right now that concerning the water corporation you talked about, is privatization the only way out, Mr. President? Well, um let me tell you, privatization is not the way out. And uh, let me call Nigerian and Africa privatization is a criminal privatization. Mm. Any government that you hear talking about privatization mm. does not mean well for their own citizens. Mm. Um, governance it's not a joke. It's a big business. That's right. And if you don't see governance like that, then, and it's a business of touching the lives of the people, business of improving on the welfare of your citizens. So now, instead of you to give people water, mm. You say you are carrying that water and giving to private hands to give your people. No minding the risks uh -huh. in placing this water in the hands of private hands that you know their own is profit. Now, example, Lagos is battling with cholera. If the Lagos state government listen to us and put the water works in order not lip services telling people what is not correct i think this issue of cholera would have not come because a lot of people are drinking from the ponds a lot of people are drinking from boreholes that are being contaminated on the ground mm. so this thing is coming because of the issue that they are bent on saying they must privatize. And um, check out in Nigeria. Huh. What is what is it? Tell me one thing that government is subsidizing. Not everything, health, education, uh, public utilities, everything is being privatized. And look at the issue of uh, uh, electricity. It has collapsed. You know, it has not. If we, there's no any improvement in it, it's going down. Mm. We, we are still managing and telling ourselves lies. But privatization cannot cannot work. 
Uganda, they, they privatized their water. They privatized their water. But at the end of the day, they took it back. Hmm. So many countries like Boston and others in the U.S., also they, they went on privatization, but they took it back again. Because the private hands cannot manage it. Eh. So except you don't like your citizens, then you push everything. You say, let the private people. And uh, who and in Africa, why I say it's, it's criminal. Uh. Who are those private people? They are these our leaders, political leaders. Uh. They are the one that will talk, turn and front people to come and buy those utilities as companies. As companies, they are the, they are the ones sitting on the chair, uh, administering and and fronting people to come and do it. It's criminal. Uh, so. Yes. Well, this, this perspective you've shared is really enlightening. But, you know, uh, we've also listened to some government uh, spokespeople that will say government do not have business in business. But what do you think and let about? me quote you. Yes. If you don't, if you, if a government do not have business in business, or what do they call it? Yeah. Let me tell you, governance is business. So if you, and you don't have any business doing there, mm -hmm. leave that place. Governance is serious business more than what you think because it's all about the people, their health, their, their food security, their infrastructure, how they will live and live life that we, we improve in their well health and, and yeah, well general well being. The Western world mentality that mm. they put in there. And let me tell you, guys are doing to us is that. They, so they take up our jobs and take it to their place and live and in, in every day they think of how to improve poverty. So I want to ask, must somebody tell you to provide water for your citizens before you provide? Never. Never. Must somebody ask you to provide primary health care? These are basics. These are basics. But they will go and say it, SDG this, SDG 16, SDG. I saw this in us. What I was reading through, I said, what kind of life? You know, say that most of the IMF uh, World Bank policies in Nigeria are actually of negative effects. To, very, uh, very uh, negative. Uh, very. Reasons are. Because they don't improve the life of the Nigerian people. Oh, okay, because they don't. Because there are areas of thoughts that, that, that have said uh, they, IMF policies. Give uh, me one. Yeah, you know, they, they tell us about uh, most of the routes that have been built. Which uh, roads? Are interventions for <laughs> intervention. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, but do you, do you really know how much, if they give you $1, how much they take from that $1? Wow. Let me tell you. Loans taking. Maybe let me bring Buhari time mm. when dollar was uh, five hundred naira or seven hundred yeah. to a dollar, and now the dollar has fallen to one thousand four hundred, one thousand five. Do you know that your loan now has become double? The interest rate. Yes, it has become double. It has become double apart from the rent, yeah. uh, the, the interest. Okay, it has become double. And because currency has been devalued, yes. Somebody hinted us that if they give you one dollar, whether they say you pay in 50 years, you must pay 11 dollars to a dollar mm. interest. I am a uh, bank policies, yes. They know how they will do it, and you will pay up to that. That's ridiculous. So now they give you loan, and you continue to pay interest, the principal is there. You pay interest on that loan for five years, and the principal is there. What well, does that mean? Well, uh, Mr. President, <laughs> we must uh, drive away from IMF. There are a lot of issues to talk about. <laughs>